Hello everybody, it's Ben at Gamescom 2016 for What Culture Gaming. I'm with Scott. Hello Scott. <laughs> How are you? You alright? So we've just seen WWE 2K17, we had it presented to us, and we wanted to bring you the top 10 things we learned from that presentation. So let's run down them now. Up first, and I know Scott is very happy about this, <laughs> is chain wrestling is no longer mandatory. So you don't have to start every match by locking into some kind of submission bear hug type thing. Well, what they used to have, um, as you guys will know, it's like it was like a rock, paper, scissors type thing. Uh, they've made that optional now, so uh, only certain superstars that's going to happen with. So the example they gave was uh, guys like Big Show or Braun Strowman or whoever bigger guys might not have to do it or wouldn't have to do it. Whereas other superstars, I think the other example was AJ Styles. Guys like that will open matches with chain wrestling, whereas other guys won't, which is great for people like me or certain other fans of superstars that just want to jump into a match and not have to worry about doing these mandatory preliminary things. Speaking of listening to the fans, they have finally changed the submission system, I say finally, it feels like an eternity. I only went in last year, it was confusing, it was really annoying, yeah. and, and it's, it's finally been switched up. You can still do that, and they've cleared it up a bit so it's a lot smoother, and we're told that there are options now. Yeah. We're not entirely sure what those options are just yet. I'm hoping it's a return to SmackDown Here Comes just the Pain, crazy, where yeah, you just yeah. mash all the buttons, yeah. because I'm simple, and that <laughs> works for me. But yep. we're yet to find out, but there is an option, which is great. Yeah, it seems like they've uh, they've made it, like I said, they've made a whole point of listening to the fans. So whilst they aren't necessarily removing the submission system entirely, they're saying that they're going to give us options. So I think if you don't want the one where you chase each other around, like the UFC style one, you'll have this other option. Next up, we've got backstage brawling and fighting in the crowd is finally back. I think it's been gone since SmackDown vs Raw 2008. It feels was like the last game it was in. It's been a while. Yeah. Um, we saw some footage of that and it looks absolutely insane. <laughs> it reminded me a lot of the old SmackDown games, like, uh, you know, Here Comes the Pain and that sort of thing. Uh, they've added some really cool transitions between areas in the backstage areas. So um, the example that they showed, I think it was like, um, I think Randy Orton there throwing Brock Lesnar like into Triple H's office. Yeah. But it all goes it all goes from gameplay to like uh, in game and cutscene back into gameplay. So he threw the dude at the door, they cut to just him slamming through the door and then you're playing inside the office with a little interstitial thing of like Triple H I and like Randy Orton up as they come in through the door. Yeah. It's just great. They've never had those sort of transitions before. And it brought back all the weapons and like all the crazy like environmental interaction that they've had in the old games. So if you're a fan of the old SmackDowns, which like here comes the pain is still like the absolute best for me. Um, it's that's a really big thing for me. So yeah, backstage stuff is back in and they've done a ton to make it way more fun and really over the top. Also in this year are changes to the ladder system. You can set them up outside the ring and throw people over the top. You can set them up in the corner of the ring. They said they wanted to make them feel more impactful when you threw someone into them yeah. or you threw someone off them. And when you're on top of the ladders going for a briefcase or a title or anything like that, they've added a new mini game up there. So you're not just dangling from it, waiting for something to happen. <laughs> And it did look a lot more brutal, the ladder footage that they've shown. Well, they've added, uh, you can actually bridge like the apron with the barrier now. And um, they didn't show which animations will interact with that. But um, I'm guessing you can probably like suplex a guy from the middle of the ring and land on a ladder, do something crazy that you would, they wouldn't do in real life kind of thing. Um, but yeah, the animation, the little mini game that they've added when you go to the top of the ladder, it's like a weird lock picking type thing. Um, but what's cool is that you have to try and aim a little dot at the middle of this mini game. And if you, if you hit it, you start filling up a bar, like a circular bar. Uh, circular logo that uh, if you fill it you end up taking the briefcase down but if I say say I fill it halfway and you then pull me down or whatever and you get up there it resumes from halfway filled so like if you want to just let someone else do the dirty work or whatever do the, the leg work for you drag them down and finish the match you can do that I don't know if that was in one of the older games I don't remember it necessarily being that way yeah. but I like the idea of uh, you know just someone being so close being robbed and then someone getting in there at the last minute and stealing it from them instead that's quite a cool mechanic so, yeah. Absolutely. And rolling straight on from that, they've actually added a new system in called the rollout system, yeah. which will make those uh, matches less of an absolute nightmare because <laughs> there are so many moving parts in those big multi-man matches. And this goes for non-ladder matches as well, where when you watch wrestling on TV, they'll often roll out of the ring. So they'll just, you know, they'll, they'll beat the crap out of someone and he'll roll out and then he'll stay out until a key moment to break up a pin or come back in, that kind of thing. Yeah. So they brought that in to make sure that there aren't five or six bodies in the ring at one time yeah. that makes an absolute mess of things so, so that could really help things move forward in those kind of matches yeah, definitely. like just to clarify all that is i think is when so many bodies are down at once or uh, like multiple like some superstars will then just roll out the ring but it's just a way of sort of maintaining like some semblance of realism kind of thing we're going to move on to my career mode now we learned a couple of big things from that oh yeah so the promo system last year i don't know if you experienced it a little bit yeah did some of the interviews and things so. 
It was it was okay. It, it promised some big things, but I think they could easily improve on it. And it sounds like they've completely overhauled it this year. It's no longer just a case of answering in a face or a heel kind of way. Yep. It will actually change how the game plays. You could be attacked during your promos, things like that. Yeah. So it looks like it's far more di dynamic than it was last year. Yeah, they've got this whole thing about uh, when you do the promos, uh, depending on what you pick, will alter the story that you get to do. Um, they didn't really go into much detail other than that, but it seems that like, yeah, your actual, the dialogue choices that you have have ramifications and a progression sort of thing. Um, so yeah, it seems like they're not just things that you're seeing in the moment. They will have some sort of repercussion further, away, further down the line. And also in my career mode, you no longer have to start in NXT if you don't want to. You can go straight to the main roster, which will please some people because as much as I love NXT, and they said that this is the biggest NXT roster they've had, it's the biggest yeah. roster they've had in general as well, even bigger than last year's. Yeah. But I did feel like I was wrestling the same people a lot right. in NXT. And yeah. they did create a couple of randomers for you to face, but hopefully that will appease a lot of people who were getting frustrated with yeah. being stuck in NXT for a while. It seems that in response to like a lot of the fan complaints or issues or things that they just wanted to do was just jump straight onto the main roster. So it, even as cool as NXT is, if you just want to get stuck into WWE, you can entirely do that. And they're more than happy to just go from there straight to WrestleMania, as opposed to working all the way through it if you don't want to. Another big part of the game that people love is the creation suites. Yeah. They have also had a bit of an addition this year. They've said that everything that was in last year is back again, which is fantastic news. But perhaps most excitingly, for me at least, <laughs> custom characters can now have their own custom Titan Tron entrance again, and you can make it yourself. Yep. Last time it was in, I think it was a few years ago in the WWE 13, 2K14, perhaps yeah, the first one. I'm not sure. It's been a little while. Um, and you just sort of chose a theme and it would generate it from your character doing certain moves. Now you can capture your highlights during a match edit it together and yep. stitch it into your own custom Titan Tron entrance, which is really exciting. Yeah, I mean, a whole, quite a lot of games on the new generation have had like photo modes and stuff, and they talk quite a bit about letting you get behind the editing controls and slow motion and whatever else. And I think you can take those and they're, they're the clips that will then form your entrance video. So it's all in engine, but I mean, maybe there'll be filters, maybe there'll be like, you know, cool little cuts and interstitials and things you can put in. Um, but yeah, you can totally make your own entrance video, which kind of completes the whole package for the, all the core stuff. Uh, I can't think of anything they yet to do. Well, we're not done, Scott. We're, we're not, not done. done because you can also create your own victory pose. There you go. That's something else you can do. I don't know what that's going to mean. <laughs> there are going to be some outrageous, probably pretty awful things I online, do. but it'll be entertaining as hell. Yeah, we have, I don't have, they didn't show us how that's going to work. I don't know if you'll still have to pick from certain animations and maybe stitch them together. Or maybe you'll be able to like, pick a limb and stretch it <laughs> and do whatever. I, I don't know how that's going to work, yeah. but I mean, that'll just lead to rude things. So we'll see. Either way, we love it. Yeah, either way, you've got like victory poses and entrances, and then you can stitch them all together and make your own custom stuff. One thing we were told about was Suplex City, and we're still not entirely sure on the details for this. Mm. We seem to be a bit divided among the team here about what it actually was. We're going to be talking to Bryce Yang tomorrow, so we're going to look for a bit of clarification on this, but it seems like in the absence of doing a showcase mode, they've amped up the Suplex City thing. Like obviously you've got Brock Lesnar in there, so they talk quite a lot about making Suplex City quite an um, identifiable part of the game. And they talked about making that like a physical aspect of the game, which in my mind, I was like, does that mean that Suplex City is a real 3D tangible thing and we're going to see it? They said they're going to be unveiling more about Suplex City in the coming weeks uh, before the release in October. But then they also talked about that being some part of their online website. So it might just be part of the promotional materials or we might actually be going to Suplex City. I don't know. But either way, Brock Lesnar is the mayor. And finally, going back to sort of the core mechanics of the actual wrestling itself, taunts now have more of a purpose than they did yeah. before. Previously, when you taunted, you would gain a bit of momentum towards a signature or a finisher, and it would just nudge up a little bit. Yep. Now, if you face the direction of the crowd and do a taunt, it increases the rate at which momentum yep. generates. So you still have to get on the attack and do stuff and so on. But if you do it towards your opponent, it boosts your character. It gives you a uh, an attack boost. So you Strike do more damage. damage. Yep. Yeah, striking damage. But yep. now, depending on who you taunt at, it actually makes a big difference as a tactical element to taunting. Yeah. That was one of the coolest things that I really liked from 2K16 was like the idea of like, because they try and do the whole simulation aspect of it and then they kind of bring in the strategic stuff and you have to like, you know, you want to you want to decide exactly when you want to use your counters because you only have a finite amount of them. So now it's like you actually want to pick and choose exactly when you want to taunt because you might want to save up the space to like burn off, the, get some you know heat off the crowd or uh, build up some energy towards your opponent or whatever. But giving you that, uh, that sort of tactical layer kind of thing, that's just another additional thing that you can do, which they didn't have before, which is, I think it's cool. I like the idea of thinking about that stuff in the moment. 
and uh, yeah, play it like actually using the crowd is something that they've never really had before in that way, so that's really cool. So that's everything we learned from our WWE 2K17 presentation. We're getting some hands-on time with it as well, so we yes. will make another video to let you know how we find it when we've had a go. Yep. But that's everything we've got for you now. Thank you very much for watching, and for all Gamescom 2016 stuff, keep it locked to What Culture Gaming. Thank you, Scott. Thank you very much.